from the rolling hills of South Central Florida. This is Far Out Radio. I'm Scott Teeters, and today is Friday. It's June the 27th, 2014. Hope you had a good day and are ready for the weekend. Dean Henderson is back with us this evening. Dean is an, abstu- an astute observer of world events, and uh, we always enjoy catching up with Dean to get his perspective on geopolitics and the machinations of those pesky international banksters. Dean has authored several geopolitical books, including Big Oil and Their Bankers in the Persian Gulf, The Grateful Unrich, and Dean has his new book that recently published in February titled The Federal Reserve Cartel. It's available at his website in either print or in Kindle format. Dean's wife is also a writer, and she's an artist, and both Dean and Jill's books are available at deanhenderson.wordpress.com, and uh, his wife's uh, artwork and her books are available at her website, showmeoz.wordpress.com. There's an ancient curse that's attributed to the Chinese that goes, may you be born in interesting times. And I'm certain that from the vantage point of uh, probably any time, it's always seemed very interesting. Things are always, there's always a certain level of unrest. And I'm sure that as people look back in the past, they always look back there and say those were the good old days. Well, who knows? Perhaps in 40 years, people will be looking back at this time and saying, God, things were really good back then. Well, however, when one considers the astonishing power of modern weapon systems, most of which we know nothing about, when international tensions start to run high, it's a good idea to start paying attention. But, you know, not all weapon systems go bang. If you study the history of money and banking, it opens up a whole new vista of possibilities and understanding of the nature of why things are the way they are. Using finance as a weapon is, may well not be new, but with the emerging global financial dictatorship centered in the city of London and the Rothschild finance empire, people can be placed in financial servitude without a single shot being fired, which one could argue is better than carpet bombing a nation the way the Allies did to Germany or the U.S. did to Vietnam and Cambodia. But why? The peoples of most nations, or all nations, don't want this, but it keeps being delivered to them. Now, it seems that there is a evil mental virus that has infected the minds of men for a very, very long time. It's very interesting, the work of uh, Jay Widener. He's been talking at length over the last few years about the discovery of an extraterrestrial race of beings called the Archons. These were written about 2,000 years ago by the Gnostics in the Nag Hammadi texts that were, uh, that were discovered in the late 1940s in Egypt. And as crazy as that might sound on the surface, the more you study it, the more sense it seems to make. Ideas, old ideas such as the divine right to rule and the royal bloodlines are just obsessions that are ancient and they're still here today. Only now they have unimaginable weapons at their disposal. And I don't just mean shooting weapons. We already mentioned money as a weapon. They also have biological and medical weapons. And food is being weaponized. Entertainment, sports, junk TV, melodyless music, cell phones, poison water. And I think I'll stop now. <laughs> Dean Henderson has been studying the machinations of the City of London Rothschild Bankster game plan for a very long time, and he's with us tonight to share his observations and insights into the current state of the world. Hi, Dean. Welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Scott. You've all, you're always writing provocative did, essays man. and uh, stirring up trouble. You've been a busy guy the last month with five new posts plus numerous appearances on press TV. And with uh, Porkyshenko's bogus truce, I'm sure you're about to unload a few zingers on us. And, uh, hey, why not? It's so easy. So <laughs> where would you like to begin? Oh, well, shoot. Looks to me like... Um it's just not working. The bankers, their little uh, World War Three plan, it's not. It's not going to work. And um, that was, you know. So it's all been an attempt. I think if you step back, I think it's all an attempt to reflate, see the global economy, because interest rates are at zero. There's nowhere left to go. The economy's not getting better. Um, and it's. You know, they're scared of deflation. That's why interest rates are at zero. And while everybody's talking about inflation, of course there's inflation. They're they're using inflation to try to stave off deflation. So they're printing money, QE, one, two, three. And sure, that's inflation. That's actually the definition of inflation is just printing 
money too much. I mean, that's what, you know. And as a result, dollar goes down. As a result, gas is higher and cartels and speculators and all this. But I think, they're, you know, Putin has just been too cool of a customer. And, um, yeah, Porkyshenko <laughs> now has uh, issued a three-day ceasefire. Apparently he's not really following the rules too good. But uh, it's a sign that of weakness on his part because what happened was these Donetsk uh, federalists, uh, you know, have become well armed and formidable and shot down some helicopters. So that's kind of what a bully does, right? And, you know, but the thing that's funny is, you know, before the thing, it was, IMF was going to give Ukraine $3 billion bailout. And, you know, Yanukovych said, no, no, we're, we're not going to go for all that and double the people's electric rates and sell our farmland for cheap to Monsanto. No, we're not going to do that. So they ran him out. Uh, and of course, an illegal coup, putsch, whatever we all know, hopefully. Um, despite Western media attempts to lie to us, that happened. Um, now it turns out the IMF is coming in and they're talking in Kiev and they're getting all this stuff done. They're going to give them a seventeen billion dollar bailout. Wow! So see, that's what it is, Scott. It's just you know more contracts, reflate the you know the thing as much as they can. This is what ISIS is about in Iraq. Here we are. The Saudis are funding them. The CIA is training them in Jordan. Come on, man. And, and you that's know, seventeen so billion. Refla- you know, billion. reflation. So go and oil companies go out. Look at the gas prices. Thirty cents up this last week. I mean, you know, and this is what they're trying to do to stave this deflation off. See, and basically that's when banks go under, bankers go to jail, and it'll just be like the thirties because then people will be pissed. You know, well, the only bankers I've seen in the last few years go to jail are the ones in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, they need, need the deflation to uh, do it. Good for them. <laughs> But now, mark my word, if there's billion. deflation, like depressionary deflation in this country, bankers will go to jail. Oh, yeah, and, so. and it hadn't happened yet. And that's that's why they're desperately trying to provoke the Russians, and, you know, into this thing. And, you know, and of course, all the while, they, you know, they're, they're sort of still a hold Ukraine. So they're just trying to calm things down now. And look, here, here's what the, another big picture item. Um, basically, they're knocking out the Russian gas to Europe. Um, trade, um, which, which has been happening for decades. Russia has supplied Europe with gas for eons. And what they're trying to do is they're, they're going to frack the hell out of our country, destroy our water under the guise of energy self-sufficiency. You know, it, isn't it great? We're producing all this energy. Then they're going to export all that natural gas through these LNG terminals they're putting up in Beaumont and Galveston and New Orleans, Shell and, you know, the big boys putting them up. And then these huge ships, these LNG uh, cargo ships, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but these things are just massive. Yeah. And um, apparently the biggest ships they've ever made, these are, of any kind. And it's crazy. So, and then they're going to float this, and they're going to try to, you know, basically start supplying Europe with uh, natural gas. That's also another, I think, important thing that uh, people um, are not talking about enough as far as Ukraine goes. And that should really, and it's connecting the dots there, right? I mean, people are against fracking. Well, then you should be caring about what's happening in Ukraine. People about Ukraine, you know, check out fracking. I mean, it's just another example. You know, this is always the way it works. There's always a reason stuff's going on. It's always about money. Follow the money. Qui bono. Speaking of the money, that, uh, that uh, what did you say, $18 billion that uh, is going to go to Ukraine, that's, that's going to be for the people, right? Yeah, you bet. Well, and all, yeah, I mean, all, all the while, you know, actually, it's just, you know, it's like the $18 billion for the contractors and the, the puppets and, and, you know, the people, they are seeing their, I mean, I, one woman on RT was saying her gas bill went up 72%. I mean, they're already implementing this stuff. You know, it didn't take long. And so they come in with aid, yeah. but the people don't get the aid. It's the, no. it's the owners of the companies that get the contracts. This is a playbook right sure. out of John Perkins and what was happening in the 70s in the Central America. No different. It's no different. That's why I always say, I, what's different about Ukraine than, than the same old shit that's been happening? Nothing. That's what. It's just RT reports it now in Press TV, and so more people are aware of what's going on. But it's no different. No different than any of these uh, these things we do have done. And yeah, and, and Perkins, of course, was on the inside of it and saw it like that. So yeah, it's the same old stuff, you know? And um, But, you know, in, in a more frantic pace, I think, because, again, the reflation. So you know, Syria didn't work out too well. They got kind of routed there. So, oh, now what, what are they doing now? Oh, well, Obama's hat in hand to Congress for $500 million more to train the moderate Syrian armed people or <laughs> whatever. And uh, they're all, you know, just crazy, and um, it's not working. And then, of course, ISIS is flowing into 
Iraq from Syria. So just a total blowback on that foreign policy blunder, you know. But it's just, I really think it's all about creating these crises now at a more rapid pace and, and desperately trying to reflate because that's all we got. The United States is a war based economy. It's a military industrial complex. I would also add it's a medical pharmaceutical industrial complex because, you know, basically killing people and getting people sick is what makes money in this country. It's and then it, that itself is pretty sick. Pardon the pun, but it is it's it's that bad. And um, you know, at my town here at West Plains, geez, thirteen thousand people, the only jobs growing, hospital jobs, clinics yeah. new, you know, for sick people and uh, everywhere I go it's like that's not just here. Probably mm-hmm. it is Same in your town here in and Florida. everybody else's town, right? So it's um it's pretty sad, but that's, you know, Bobby Kennedy said, he, you know, he said GDP, you know, growing GDP is, is not a good thing when it's riot batons and ambulances, you know, and that's kind of what we're looking at. But if we don't have that, we won't have growing GDP. We'll have, you know, two two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which is a recession. Then we'll have a depression, and, and it'll be ugly. And, and Deutsche Bank will go under, Citigroup will go under, Chase will go under, all the big the uh, big big banks will go under. That's why Soros is selling his stock in those banks right now. Um, ha- has already apparently. Uh, he's a rough child lieutenant, and uh, he does what he's told with with the money. Um, and um, well, so funny yeah, that's what that was what they're, that's how big this is. You're, you're so right. We live in interesting times. I mean, it's going to get real interesting. All right, not to mention what's going to happen to the dollar. You know, you mentioned Soros, you know, he's selling off uh, assets you know, or stock assets, that kind of paper stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are yeah, saying, well, why is he doing that? Why is he doing that? It may well it, it may well just simply be that he knows what's coming up and he's not stupid. You don't sell low and buy high. <laughs> you sell yeah, high and you doing. buy low. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, when guys like him are, are – uh, Evacuating their portfolio, that might be a little bit of a red flag up that yeah, something's right coming down the road. I was just listening before the program to your um, – you were on the, um, uh, Press TV yesterday talking about what's going on in Detroit. You mentioned an interesting little factoid. Actually, it's a big factoid that uh, over the course of 10 years, Lockheed Martin has received $952 billion dollars for that dog of an airplane, the F-35, $952 billion for yeah. nothing. Yeah, well, it's okay. actually, so people, yeah, that's for, that's that for all there, the value but, of all their federal contracts, not just the A-35. But, but, yeah, I mean, still, I mean, it's like almost a trillion dollars, dude, from the government over 10 years. But you got to understand, you know, Lockheed Martin administers most food stamp programs, you know, in most states. Lockheed Martin um, owns the technology on all those cameras on traffic lights and collects a fee every time, you know, it's used from cool. these cities and just bankrupting cities, overcharging them with this stuff. I mean, they're not just making planes. They're just, well, oh, they're just a giant parasite is what they are. But that's welfare, and that's the point I was trying to make. You know, you don't want to help these people, these poor folks in Detroit who can't pay their bills, but, you you know, you don't have any problem giving these guys almost a trillion dollars. Um you know, and Lockheed Martin, most of their shareholders are British. I mean, it's not even really an American company. And it's like spread all this sensitive stuff. Mm. You talked about the city of London earlier. Uh-huh. Speaking so of Lockheed Martin, Tell about me. 10 years ago or so, uh, uh, Karen and I used to get together with a nice couple that we met that lived uh, a few miles away from where we were in New Jersey. And the husband worked for Lockheed Martin. He was a radar um, uh, specialist. And uh, we used to get together um, once a month or so just to talk about some of the interesting teachings from the Conversations with God series. And uh, one night uh, we went over to visit them, and uh, the husband uh, had along some of his uh, coworker friends who were also interested in the book. They also worked at Lockheed Martin, and we're you know going through the small talk stuff. And when we first sat down to talk to him, and um, when uh, both of these these fellows actually said. Uh, with regard to working for Lockheed Martin, they both said, yeah, we work for Satan. <laughs> and everybody kind of went, huh? <laughs> but I never uh-huh. forgot it, and I have a feeling we weren't joking. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, hey, my, my wife's uh, dad worked for Lockheed Martin. He worked for Martin Marietta, and then they got bought out, and you know, he was a rocket scientist. So, yeah, I know, it's... Uh, but that you know, it's just an example. I mean, there that goes on every day in this country. And um, the point, I guess, again, and the, de- the debate was about Detroit. And uh, as you know, and what they 
or doing to help them, which is nothing. And um, they, you know, the only and and furthermore, you know, the, the economic point I was making was that we're not going to get out of this mess. We're not going to get out of this deflation because the other thing we learned about it in the 30s was you need a huge government jobs program. And a political climate is so far to the right right now that that's just not in the cards. You know, you got, you know, basically the Democrats genuflect into John Boehner about the VA when it was Bush and Reagan that cut it and stripped it and trashed it. And and it's so pathetic. These Democrats are so gutless and these Republicans are so arrogant and pompous and it's just so disgusting. So there's nobody standing up saying, look, we need a huge government stimulus Keynesian program. You know, to, and while we're at it, you know, we can fix all these things that are just totally falling apart. I mean, you go to any other country lately, and the, everything's more modern. Everything, you know, it's just crumbling here. Just and and how many jobs that creates, and how that reflates the economy instead of war. You know, and uh, but no, 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 can't have government anything, and that's the climate we're in. So I'm afraid, you know, that we're in for a rough ride, and it'll start with the dollar going down. Um, I think pretty well, sharply. You use the expression "a rough ride," and that rough ride is is currently being uh, experienced by the people of Detroit. It's a it's a wrecked, ruined town with yeah. large areas that uh, where nobody lives, and they're just letting it go back to nature. You yeah, know, you I'm sure the like a minister are happy about that. Yeah, but you were crazy. on press TV yesterday uh, talking about the the fact that Detroit started cutting off water to delinquent customers. Now, a lot of people would say. Well, they're delinquent. You cut them off. Uh, <laughs> tell us, um, tell us a little more, bit more about this, Dean. Well, I mean, that's and that's the other thing we, were, you know, I was trying to bring up yesterday, and I'll say it again. You know, it's just America has this, just this mean streak. You know, it's gotten this mean streak, and it is this real conservative sort of, you know, retribution. You know, retribution against the poor, retribution against the guy that you know robs a liquor store, retribution against. I don't know, even ourselves. I mean, no, we don't deserve, you know, big old chicken breast, so we're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and eat this little bitty piece of meat because we don't deserve the big breast. We don't, you know, and it's just bizarre, and I think it's just self-hatred. It's just really heavy, really deep. I'm not a psych, whatever, psychiatrist or whatever, but, dude, it's deep, and it's like retribution is the theme. And, again, it's like, oh, those people didn't pay their bills. Well, then the hell with them. Well, yeah, those people didn't pay their bills because the auto industry shut down and bankrupt. And we farmed everything out to China, and a lot of black families in particular went to Detroit to get those good-paying auto industry jobs, and we're a solid middle class. And it just seems like there's these racist overtones, too, because the mayor was black, and, oh, there was all this corruption. Well, hell, there's corruption in Washington every damn day. But it just seems like, especially because they're black, and there was this black mayor, and, oh, he must have been corrupt, and it's just like, well, what is that? What kind of... <laughs> What kind of country is that? I mean, what kind of mindset is that? Instead of saying, you know, hey, we can do this. Uh, yeah, Detroit led the way, you know, in the ni- you know, 1920s and basically built this country, man. And we owe it something. Okay? That's what it is. We owe it. We do owe it something. We need to be held accountable. We need to... F- you talk about, you know, pulling yourself... Well, then pull yourself up by the bootstraps and be a human being and be a decent human being and say, thank you, Detroit, and, and say, here, here's some money. Uh, now and you're welcome, and it's going to be paltry amount compared to the 1.7 trillion dollars we burn in Iraq, and now they want to burn more. They want to burn more money in Iraq, and, and let more Americans die. All the while putting their little bumper stickers on their minivan, pretending to be patriots. They're traitors, is what they are. These people with these ideas. They're wrecking our country. They're destroying our country, uh, and we're going to pay for it, all of us, even the ones that aren't destroying our country, like me and you. You mentioned Iraq. On June 23rd, there was a poll reported in the uh, New York Times that said that 58% of those uh, polled disapprove of how Obama's handling the crisis in Iraq. Of course, now, if something bad was to happen, that would would plummet, Um, you know, um, because it doesn't take much to... to, uh, Get the American people broiled, uh, you know, to to go to war. I remember the day of uh, of nine eleven. I had to go over to the supermarket, and I asked one of my one of the people that I knew they were working at the store. You know, I said, uh, "Do you know what happened?" And she said, "Yeah." And I bet I hope we bomb somebody. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. I know. I think <laughs> that's changed a little. Maybe Scott. I hope. I don't know. Maybe I hope not. So. I mean, after Afghanistan, after. You know, maybe it's I think, but 
you know, it, it's just it's just frustrating again because it's just the priorities aren't there. And um, here we are talking about ISIS, and nobody's talking about Detroit except Press TV. <laughs> Where else did you see you know, That's pretty anything about that? I mean, you know, and it's our own country. This is our country. It's like, oh, I see the Iranians are looking out for us at least, you know. And I'm um, sure they're trying to score political points and say, look how messed up it is. And it is. But it's it's an embarrassment. I mean, they had to go, you know, that was the whole thing. That was the whole story was some, uh, you know, human rights people, activist types in Detroit, just so fed up with this uh, stonewall and not getting any help from anybody. Because it's not just the delinquent customers. I mean, the, the system itself is falling apart, you know. Yeah. So it's just sporadic and it's just a wreck. And um, the other, the so other they took it to the UN. Was... They took it to the UN, and the UN human rights people decided it was a violation of basic human rights. And you can say what you want about the UN, but there's 252 countries with 252 opinions there, and mm-hmm. they're right about this one. Once in it's a while, they do get things right. It's just embarrassing. That a no, first the world that was, superpower was, could live like let his people live in like that. Wow. The fellow that was on the program with you made made an interesting point that when. Uh, shut-off notices went out to the people uh, who were in the rears. Uh, within two days, uh, 50% of them came in, and they paid their bill. And yeah. what was being inferred was that, well, they had the money all along. I seriously doubt that. It was well, one of those you know, things and, where... And I don't mind you know, that. I mean, he used common sense. Yeah, of course send out a shut-off notice. And you'll get a lot... And, and that, maybe that weeds that out right there, yeah. I don't but have a problem I'm with that. Uh, a lot of those, yeah, it is a good point, but but it doesn't change the fact that the people that didn't pay it, that, yeah, they definitely don't have the money. Nobody wants their power cut off. Nobody wants to pay 150 bucks to rehook it or what, probably more. You know, it's a hassle. Nobody wants to do that, you know. And, yeah, there's some crackheads that just let it happen. Well, you know, I, well, when you get two crackheads out of 100 people that need help, I'll just go ahead and, you know, let them slide through the cracks. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm arm, I'm arm, I'm arm, I'm arm in black water, man. I'm not going to worry about that. A couple crackheads. Dean, we got our know? music playing in the background, so we're going to take a commercial break. I'm sure a lot of people had to make the hard decision. We either pay the water bill so we can flush the toilet, or we'll go find someplace to eat. So uh, right. I'm sure it was a hard choice for a lot of people. Dean, we'll be right back. And we are back. And uh, that's right. Don't let the man get you. You know, in the intro, I was talking about different types of uh, weapons of war, and now we're seeing uh, financial war being played out. Uh, Wednesday, or was it today? No, Wednesday at the voiceofrussia.com, there was an interesting article that says, U.S. sanctions on Russia put huge risk on American jobs and business. U.S. sanctions on Russia putting huge risk on jobs and businesses, according to a recent article in Bloomberg. In fact, two top U.S. business-related lobbies are getting ready to break with President Barack Obama over the idea of even more sanctions against Russia after several months of giving their disapproval to the White House. Those two groups are the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the National Association of Manufacturers. They don't like this stuff. So here we are you know, at the top, at the political uh, end. You know, we have a we have a, a, a weak president, a feckless president, who is uh, trying to be tough guys, saying we're going to put sanctions on them. And uh, who's it end up hurting? Us. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's almost like you couldn't design a foreign policy that hurt our interests more. So who's designing this foreign policy? Is all, you know, IMF comes out the other day along the same lines, and, so, and they come out in favor of an increase in the minimum wage in America. Now, I mean, that's bizarre. <laughs> so you know it's bad. I mean, you know it's bad when these bankers are saying, look, if we don't at least use a little bit of common sense, you know, give these people a little something put in their pockets so they can buy something, you know, afford to, you know, then, you know, it, it, again, it's just Keynesian economics. It's just put, you got to put money in people. Henry Ford knew it. you got to pay your workers yes. and they'll buy the cars. Well, and a few it, weeks and that's, ago, what went off, that's what went off the rails here is the workers sort of just became a non-factor. And, you know, we all became enamored with Wall Street and uh, forgot about, oh, that's right, we're workers. We're all workers. Oh, shoot, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Gee, and there's the retribution. It's like, yeah, you're a worker, so why are you so against workers? Or why are you so against unions? Or why are you so against... I mean, yeah, of course there's corruption in unions. But the idea of a union, the idea of a union is to organize labor against capital. Because capital is already organized, <laughs> plenty, well organized. And they own the government, uh, every government, mostly. Well, not everyone, but almost all of them. And so, you know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just like, no, we have to, it's like the, the book, you know, by Thomas Frank, What's the Matter with Kansas, you know, and it's all about, you know, why are these people voting against their interests, you know, and um, 
So it's crazy times. I just I don't know. I mean, I I guess I told Jeff, and we were you know, of course, everybody talking about Ukraine, but it just seems to me that it's out of our hands. I told Jeff that, and I think it's true. And uh, he kind of agreed because it, you know Americans are just we didn't wake up in time, and you know, not enough of us. Some of us did, but now it's going to be in the hands. I really do think of the BRICS and the G20, and uh, this uh, yeah. A different deal. This this end of the Anglo American uh, hegemony was was an article I wrote last week. You know, on the end of Anglo American hegemony, and it's um, I believe that's true. That's what's happening. This will be a good thing in the end because um, somebody's going to put these bankers in jail. I just don't think it's going to be us. I don't think we have it in us anymore. I, I'm sorry to say. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to you know, and you will. But and I, you know, win, lose, draw, whatever. I'm going to the mat with these guys. But you know, somebody's going to put them in jail. And it'll 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 just be have to be a team effort. But America as a country, we're going to hurt. We're going to suffer because we didn't wake up in time. Because we deserve to suffer, maybe because maybe it's karma because we didn't wake up, we didn't do enough. And um, you know, so here we are. So um, the dollar will go down, and uh, it'll get things will get tougher yet, and higher priced. And you know, um, the one good thing is maybe interest rates will be forced up by that dollar decline um, dramatically, even. And so, like savers will actually be able to. You know, make five percent of your money again at a bank, you know, a local bank or whatever, you know. And well, Dean, we certainly have the uh, system for arresting people. I mean, I was reading earlier in the week that a, a couple in uh, Pennsylvania were arrested because they had the audacity to have their baby at home. Phew. And the, well, the authorities came in, they and they took the baby, and the people were were uh, put under arrest. So, I mean, there there is a mechanism for people putting people under arrest. Now, uh, several weeks ago, there was a story that was on Jeff's site. That was uh, in defense of uh, the banking elite. Uh, they were argued, trying to argue the case that because of the intricate nature of the kind of work that they do, that they're really too important to jail. So uh, they shouldn't, because if they were jailed, things would just, they would really fall apart then. Well, that's that divine right of kings mentality <laughs> yeah. that you were talking about earlier. And uh, that's why they call themselves the Illuminati. You know, it's not my word. It's not conspiracy people's word it's their word because they're the illuminated ones and they're smarter than us because of their bloodlines whether or not they're aliens or lizards or whatever doesn't really matter actually does it because they just think they have this special status and it's a sense of entitlement and again america you know when you we use the word entitlement it's coming off fox news and it's talking about food stamp people but i'm talking about here some real sense of entitlement <laughs> like we're we're not only gonna eat it half the trough, we're gonna eat it all of it, and then we're gonna own the trough, and then we're gonna buy some more troughs, and then we're gonna bill it to the government, and then we're gonna set up some more troughs for our inbred family members, and then bill it to this government. And man, so that's how screwed up we are, and and that's entitlement. Now there was a really good story at RT tonight about these anti-monarchy group uh, in England that's starting up, and and there's one in Spain. Oh, really? I mean, there's significant uh, movements apparently in Spain and England to get rid of the monarchy. Would that be I, positive? I didn't. I didn't see that one yet. Tell us yeah. a little bit more yeah, that about was on that anti-monarchy uh, group. Yeah, that's, uh, well, cool, built right? I know. See, and these are the divine right of kings people, and but we have our own here. I mean, we we have a, a semblance of a sort of a veil, uh, you know, of uh, pseudo democracy, but it's not democracy, and everybody knows it's not democracy because it's just money, and you know. Money buys influence, and everybody knows it. So we don't have democracy. Do we have, you know, basically bloodline elites that run this country, and um, and they have that same sense of entitlement, and that's why Lockheed Martin gets nine hundred and sixty-two billion dollars. And by the way, uh, as I said, they administer the the food stamp programs in the majority of the states now. Lockheed. So when you when, you know when people say, well, these food stamp, well, who gets most of the food stamp budget? Lockheed Martin, not poor people. Wow, that's a heavy. Banks are also involved in administering these various uh, the social programs where, where money is. Uh, I think it's for roads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, right? You know, a couple mm-hmm. years ago, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz shared an interesting story mm-hmm. from Tennessee, and she yeah, she's awesome. uh, she was saying that she discovered that uh, the state of Tennessee, in order to try to save some money, decided to outsource the. Um, uh, the phone bank system for when you call in for your uh, unemployment assistance. They outsourced it to some third world country. As, so here's a state with, you know, she, her, her rap on this was, here's a state with high unemployment, people could use some jobs, 
And so what does the state do? They outsource the, uh, the, the call centers to a foreign country. Yep. And they could have hired some of the people in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just, it is just common sense. A lot of it's got, and there just seems to be a real lack of common sense right now. You know, with regard to this notion about arresting bankers, as the, as many of them should be, uh, like was done in, in uh, Iceland, the, we obviously have a mechanism in place for uh, carrying out such orders. What we don't have a mechanism in place for is the delivery of such orders. It just won't happen. And I think it all comes back to campaign finance and campaign yep. contributions because no politician in his right mind who wants to stay there until his, you know, his last day is going to do anything to yep. offend his corporate gift givers. Oh, and I don't right. think it's all the, complicated yeah. than that. So, and, all, and you're right, all the laws are on the books. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's all kinds, I mean, in the, in the, area, in the area of antitrust, which, you know, which to me... Another one of those areas that never gets talked about, but it's so necessary. I can name a hundred different conglomerates that need to be broken up across eight or nine different sectors of the economy. I think we Starting need to Exxon get mobile and Chevron company. Texaco. Okay, Dean, I think and, we need to get some nobody market. talking about that. We need to get Sorry. some marketing people to come up with some better, better uh, lingo for things like monopolies and antitrust. Yeah. Because yeah, if you so say any trust and it just doesn't resonate for people. When you say monopolies, they go, what are you talking yeah. about, board game, dude? No, yeah. no, no, no. We, we need to do some better language. words. Yeah. That, so. and it's, it's right true, now, but we it need is. to sell some things. So we're going to take our yeah, commercial yeah. break. And on the other side, we'll continue our conversation with our friend Dean Henderson. Be right back. And we are back, rolling into our last segment with our friend Dean Henderson. Dean, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, I keep watching him, and I got to tell you, I, I think this guy is the coolest international cat on the planet right now. Uh, his restraint is nothing but extraordinary, uh, and I keep wondering, you know, wh how is this guy going to play this thing out? What are your thoughts on on Putin, and uh, what do, what do you think his game plan might be? Well, I mean, I think it's fair to assume that some of these arms coming in are definitely Russian and. Maybe there's some FSB involvement with that. Um, yeah, I think that's fair to say. And um, it did change the balance of power in that conflict quite a bit, and that's why there's this, even though it's a phony ceasefire, and even though, you know, yesterday John Kerry, he's over there saying, you know, here's the conditions of the ceasefire, and part of the conditions is that these Federalists just lay down their weapons, you know. Well, they're not going to do that. So, you know, it's a fake ceasefire. But... Um, that it's interesting that things are moving in Putin's direction, you know, and he's just trying to avoid World War Three. You can't blame him. I mean, some people say, "Oh, he should go in and help those people," and but you know, come on. I mean, it's World War Three at that point. That's exactly what these people want, and um, he's not going to do that. So, and, and he's playing the economic cards, which you know we talked about. I believe last time I was on here, maybe about just you know the big oil, or the big natural gas deal with China and trading in rubles and renminbi instead of dollars and stuff like that, which is why the dollar is going to crash, because more and more countries are doing that. It'll become a multi-currency multi world. Um, and probably the counter move by the bankers will be to, when the dollar collapses, they'll try to bring in the IMF SDR as a currency, but I don't think that's going to fly. Um, there's just too many people, countries, waking up. That's, the, that's what's encouraging out there. So... Russia is just one of those awakened countries. I think they went through this stuff in late, you know, '98. You know, when they swooped in there, and um, you know, the Wall Street crowd went in there, and even Louis Free, the FBI director, was over there, which is against the U.S. Constitution, by the way. And the first time it ever happened, it's happened a lot since, I think. But you know, he goes over there. And, um, basically, they dismantled, uh, you know, and stole a lot of uh, resources, stole a lot of uh, oil, oil uh, resources, and all kinds of things, and. Uh, they saw that. The Russians saw that. Not just Putin, but the whole country saw that. And they saw Yeltsin, the boozing IMF hobo, and how he tried to hijack their the proud country and destroy it um, for these bankers. And they don't forget that. And so did Venezuela see that. And so did Nicaragua see that. And so did Iran see that. And so did Indonesia see that. And so did... See, and that's what's catching up with us, with, with this Anglo-American, you know, CIA, Mossad, British intelligence, Rothschild... Yeah, aliens, whatever. Um, this is what's catching up with them. And um, you know, on the other side, you got you got America's addiction to Facebook and all these social media. And 
really, you know, I don't know, out to lunch a lot of times on, on a lot of things. That is, you know, comfort, comfortable living in the belly of the beast. Um, but the empire th- is declining as we speak. I think that shows up in our, in our entertainment and it explains why mm-hmm. our entertainment is just getting so bizarre and strange. Yeah. I don't right. watch it. And bizarre. one day Karen happened to have the TV on and I saw that uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians was into its eighth season. I went, <laughs> you got to be <laughs> kidding me. That, that must be a real winner, you know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, I know. And, um, of course, that's the part of the plan. And, um, you know, is to do that. But, again, you just wonder, like, you know, who who is it that's, you know, it just looks like a systematic destruction of our country to me uh, in that area that you're talking about, the area of, you know, news entertainment. Um you know the brainwashing at that level. The you know the military blunders. The 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 just uh, you know, my God. You know backing ISIS to go after Maliki and what uh, separate Kurdistan. Of course, as part of their plan. Um, that that is a big part of that plan, by the way, because there's oil in Kirkuk and the Kurds control it. And now you're going to start hearing all about Kurdish autonomy again. See, and the, their boy Mustafa Barzani is at the helm. He worked for the CIA for decades. You know. Uh, including helping them to invade Iran, um, things like that. And so not a good guy. And they got the oil up there, um, a lot of it. There's also a lot of oil on the south. But, uh, you know, it's just crazy times. But, but yeah, you got to keep people especially uneducated and apathetic in the, in the belly of the beast. And, you know, the question is, um, you know, how long is it going to last? How long are people going to be comfortable anymore? Because a lot of people are getting kind of uncomfortable, you know, as we speak. And I think it's a lot so more people than you true. think. Like maybe it's people living next door to you and you don't even know it. Because, you mm-hmm. know, people suck it up. They don't want to talk about it. But, you sure. know, there's a lot of people paycheck to paycheck, you know. And, uh, yeah, now we got the people in Detroit can't pay their bill because they got to buy food. You think it's just in Detroit? No. I mean, I think 35% of kids are living in poverty in this country now, I heard. Something like that. It's crazy. So, yeah, it, just hopefully people will wake up more and more, you know, Scott, and uh, we can stave this off. And uh, there's probably going to be some pain in between, I'm thinking, at this point. But, you know, that'll be okay as long as people learn from it. Well, speaking of the media, I, I came across something very interesting this afternoon. Apparently, uh, if you pay attention to, uh, uh, to news, it's no surprise. It's been written about many times that CNN is tanking. Uh, uh, Larry King said recently that uh, the only way he would come, he would even consider coming back is if they got rid of Piers Morgan. Well, Piers is gone, and I noticed that I, don't, yeah. I haven't heard that Larry's coming back yet, but I don't really care about that. Yeah, CNN I think I heard of Piers Morgan, though. The other, the other cable news network that, that is having a very difficult time is CNBC. Uh, and I've known for a long time they've been out of touch with reality. But they are now, they are now having the lowest ratings since 1997. And uh, Jim, I'm going to break another pencil Kramer. His program is absolutely tanking. It's awful. And I think people are just saying, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just don't care. Good, right? I'd rather watch the Kardashians. Yeah, it's just the cheerleader channel, you know, CNBC mostly. I mean, you know, it's mostly a cheerleader cheerleader channel for the bankers. You know, let's face it, and that's a good thing, you know, that, that people aren't watching that garbage anymore. But not that I don't watch it sometimes because, you know, you get they can, they'll kind of tell you what they're doing or brag about it, you know, and just like I read the Wall Street Journal sometimes because, you know, they're, again, they're, they're bragging about all their projects and so you can find out a lot of interesting things by reading the Wall Street Journal. But they definitely, you know, that's News Corp and that's the same thing. It's a cheerleader paper for Wall Street for the bankers. And, and uh, yeah, owned by Rupert Murdoch and the Prince of Saudi Arabia, just like Fox. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's just crazy times. And um, we just got to uh, hold the pole, man. I think we got to hold the pole, Scott. It's, it's uh because it's not just that. There's people saying this uh, Nubira is coming close, and the you know the dark star or whatever people call it, you know, and but the Anunnaki live, and uh, like it's actually coming close, and so I don't know. And I kind of noticed like people are tweaking a little bit, you know, like just hold the pole, remain calm, be the calm one, don't panic, and um, you know we'll get through this, and it will involve economic uh, yeah hardship um, for all of us, I think. But like I said. Um, you know, just hang in there, people, just, and learn from it because uh, economic hardship's not all that bad. I met a lot of nice people who've endured economic hardship, 
in my life. Well, you've traveled the world, that's for sure. I want to drift back a little bit to uh, to Putin. I saw on, uh, on Rants.com that apparently uh, um, Mr. Kerry is warning Putin about more sanctions, new sanctions. And it occurred to me, and I don't even know if this is possible or not, but what would happen if Putin made a grand announcement saying that Russia was going to initiate sanctions on the United States? Yeah, I wonder, you know, what, the reaction, I wonder even, what the yeah. reaction would be. Yeah, boy. Even better, and um, I think I said this once in a Press TV interview, but even better would be if he would go public, publicly issue arrest warrants for the eight families, you know, public, instead of sanctions on the U.S., you know, do that. Or sanction them or whatever, but, you know, start naming names. I mean, he's got this giant stage right now. He's got most of the world behind him. And this will be a really opportune time to identify these people for the whole world to know their names. And, you know, uh, yeah, issue an arrest warrant, you know, fine with me. Bring them in. You know, somebody's got to bring these people in. There's rumors already that, you know, there's, I don't know, that they're like Rothschilds, if they go to Russia, they'll be arrested. But I don't know if they're true or not. I haven't mm-hmm. verified those. But, um yeah, I, I, this is the this is the the great game, beginning of the end, and I think the bankers are going to lose, but we're all going to suffer because of that. It's just the way we've set we've, we've set it up that way. We were dumb enough to set it, you know, or let it be set up that way, and and we, and it is. And so, but, but, the, but what I'm yeah, I'm very clear about what I'm saying is I think the bankers are going to lose. You, know, you as you well know, it's been a hundred and one years since the uh, the Federal Reserve uh, basically took over our country. And if you just you know set that aside and, and look about you know on a timeline kind of a, a viewpoint, you know all the things that have happened in the last hundred years. You know, it started right? the Great War, and then the the depre- and then the Roaring Twenties, and the Depression, and then World War Two, and then a boom here in the states, and then the United States going on a rampage. And there's just this constant churning uh, with a with an explosion of technology that has uh, truly mesmerized uh, uh, the world, such that they don't pay any attention to the international bankers for the most yeah. part. And the well, international the bankers plan. get to go on their merry way. That's part of the plan. You hear that but, big um, ching noise up in the sky, folks? That's yeah. the city of London. <laughs> Dean, we got about a minute left. What are you working on that you'd like to tell us about? Oh, um, my garden. You're going to be, on, <laughs> gonna be on with Jeff later tonight. Yeah, be on with Jeff. I love yeah, him cool. tonight. Doing, doing uh, the late night. Tonight uh, all. For about in my time, anyway. CSD. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the... Other than that, just, yeah, um, keeping busy, I guess, man. And I always enjoy uh, talking with you, Scott, so thanks for having me. Oh, you're always well. You're quite welcome, and we always enjoy talking to you, Dean. Hey, have a great weekend. Our best to Jill, and uh, we'll do it again in a few more weeks. Sounds good. Take care. Okay, take care. That is our program for this evening. Thanks for being with us on Monday. Zen Gardner will be with us, and uh, we're going to talk about how do you study these kinds of things without it overwhelming you and uh, leaving you feeling uh, crushed and uh, and defeated. Uh, there are ways to do that, and Zen and I will be talking about that on Monday night. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Next week, uh, we're going to a three-day uh, a week program, and we will be on from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So have a great weekend. We'll be back next week with more Far Out Radio.